Now it's time to bring in one of our favorite guests. I mean, it's 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 not good that he's coming on today after what happened last <laughs> night to the Toronto Maple Leafs. But joining us now is Stevie Sahoya, Stephen Sahoya of North Star Bets, a uh, noted Boston Bruins fan and Leaf hater. So, Stevie, I'll give you the floor <laughs> if you want to just take your shots right now before we get into this segment. Well, look, I want to preface this all by saying I picked the Leafs in seven. So, so far, things things are going according to plan. <laughs> this is going to game seven, Leafs fans. If you think you're ending oh it in Tampa, God. think twice. You're not going to beat the Lightning three times on the road in one series. It's just not going to happen. I, I do think, though, they, they overcome their demons and they get to the Bruins in round two. We'll be waiting for them after their win tonight. Hey, the Bruins aren't through yet. We'll get hey, to that he's game. The shots. Bruins are we'll get to tonight. that game. But what was your, uh, your biggest takeaway from that Leafs loss last night from a Leafs perspective? My biggest takeaway is they, they got to change the script. Like you can't just bank on these miracle comebacks late in games mm. every single night. They get behind early and they're chasing the game the rest of the night. And I, I honestly didn't think uh, that they were competing with all that much urgency until they went down 3-1. I think you need to see a more complete game out of the Maple Leafs. So we, outside of game two, I don't think we've seen a game where we can definitively say, oh, the Leafs have dominated from start to finish or at least have gotten on or started on the right foot. Even last night, they score the first goal, but I thought Tampa Bay was the better team in the early going, and they responded less than 30 seconds later. Yeah, Justin, they just can't play a complete game. Honestly, no, they, they can't. can't. Stevie, I want to get your thoughts on John Cooper post game saying, "Wouldn't it be great that we're all going to be back here for Game Seven? Uh, Albert hates John Cooper. No, for I whatever, don't. For whatever <laughs> weird reason, he does not like I hate John. First, John. This guy's telling me telling Pat Maroon that I want to scrap him, and now I hate. I you did hate. say you want to fight Pat Maroon. <laughs> yeah, that was after a few drinks through text, not on the show. Same thing. Anyway, doesn't matter. Continue. Anyway, what do you make of just John Cooper's messaging and the way he can just? flip the script in the media and get his guys going uh, when, you know, the pressure is on. That's what going to law school does for you, right? I can't, I can't talk like that. I went to media school. I can't talk like that. (laughs) You got to get a law degree to be able to work the press the way he does. It's, it's just mastermind behavior. You just see the way he goes about deflecting things. I don't think once anyone has ever underestimated the, the lightning players in this series. No one has talked about Stamkos having a really quiet series or Kucherov maybe being a little more inconsistent or whatever it is, the poor play from Vasilevsky. That got a little bit of run, but what's the, what's the narrative now? Oh my gosh, elimination, Vasilevsky's back. Like they just do a very good job of just deflecting the pressure. And maybe part of it is because they're the three-time running Eastern Conference champs and two-time Stanley Cup champs during that stretch. Or maybe part of it, you know, you don't get the same media pressing in Tampa Bay, but you just he, he just is able to deflect the talking points away from it being his player shortcomings onto other topics. And it, it's it's a genius mastermind behavior. Yeah, definitely a deflector. And so Stevie has the Leafs winning in seven. If you like the Leafs to win the series on North Star Bets, big number, minus 455. On the other side, plus 350 for Tampa to win the series isn't that bad. Um, if you think it goes over six and a half minus one twelve, not a bad bet either. Uh, speaking of a series going to Game Six that many probably didn't expect to go to Game Six, the Bruins and the Panthers. Paul Maurice uh, has tons of love for Matthew Kachuk, calling him an uh, uh, expletive gamer. Um, how is this series going to unfold? Because I can't imagine Bruins not winning this. I mean, it, I can see it going to seven, Stevie, but if it does, it's all Bruins, right? I think Boston gets it done in six. They looked Mm. really good when they went to Florida earlier this year. And head coach Jim Montgomery talked about how Boston, I don't know what it is, but they've just looked lackadaisical on home ice in this series. You look last game, Tyler Bertuzzi throws a muffin right into the slot to get the Panthers on the board. And then the overtime goal, Linus Allmark, like, what are you doing? He's a good puck handler, but I mean, he flipped it right over his defenseman stick right to the Panthers and they finished it. I, I think Boston gets it done on the road. They were the best road team in the regular season, outscored the Panthers 10 to four in games three and four down in South beach. So I, I'm thinking tonight the Bruins end it. And I, I, I honestly think that it's going to be a bit of a route. You look at the shots from last game. It was almost doubled up. It was 47 to 25 in favor of Boston. I thought they were the better team. They just killed themselves with those two boneheaded errors. Now, this might be hard for you to answer, Stevie, seeing that you are a major Bruins fan, but we know how great Matthew Kachuk is at this time of year. But I want to talk about Carter Verhege. I think the way he's able to control the game from the center ice position 
is very impressive. When you watch Carter Verhage play, what do you because we don't hear a lot of him in the mainstream media because he plays in Florida, but what do you see and what do you like from his game? I like that he's not afraid to shoot the puck. This is someone who will fire the puck from anywhere. And I think on a Florida team where you have a lot of skill and maybe sometimes too much finesse, you have a guy like Verhage who says, all right, I'm just going to fire it and see how this goes. And he's a good story, too. This is someone who had to work his way up through the, the NHL level. Like, he got drafted by the Leafs, never really panned out there. Got some bottom six minutes on the Bolts before that, and it was just okay. But he had to prove his stripes at the NHL level, and he did with Florida. And I think it's because of his shoot-first mentality. That's something that goes a long way, especially when he has a, a nice shot, too. So it, it, he's just a player who keeps things simple on the ice, and it's rewarding for him. And there's been a lot of good players in mm-hmm. this series. Uh, Taylor Hall being one of them. How about that? Who would have thought he'd be the, the leading point getter for the Bruins in the playoffs with eight points? Tyler Bertuzzi's been good. Um, but out of all the players uh, on the Bruins right now, who's been the standout for you? Is it Taylor Hall? I think it has to be. You look... You're not getting what you got from the regular season out of David Pasternak. He's just got two goals in this series, no assists. They've mm-hmm. been playing him really tight. But you know what? He gets paid the big bucks. He's got to find a way to break through. But in the in the interim, it's been Taylor Hall. He's been chipping in from the third line, the second line. He just looks dynamic every time he touches the puck. He showcased his shot in the last game, in the last couple of games. But he's also just a really smart playmaker. He, it's he's the one of those players you talk about depth being the overriding factor in the postseason and the reason why you're able to win series when your stars are quiet and Taylor Hall has been the reason why the Bruins are ahead. I, I think if Hall was still out with a, an injury, I don't know if the Bruins are ahead in this series. Um, if you look at that playoff points list in terms of leaders, you got Dry Sottle on there from Edmonton, Evan Bouchard from Edmonton, Connor McDavid, uh, and they look to close out against the Kings this weekend on Saturday. I was listening to the Spit and Chicklets podcast, and uh, Biz Nasty came out and said, "If the Edmonton Oilers go all the way and win the Stanley Cup, Drysaddle and McDavid are the greatest duo in sports after most Scotty dynamic Pippen, duo. most dynamic, sc- excuse me, duo next to Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan. If they somehow get past this series and they make a run to win the Stanley Cup, where do you sit with Drysaddle and McDavid in terms of in the annals of sports?" Well, I go after Albert and Justin on the homestand show. Oh, you know, they're number three for me. That's you, why buddy. he's our favorite this guest. Why That's why you. he's our favorite guest. You see, this is why I'm a reoccurring guest, <laughs> even despite all the Leafs hate. But no, I think as far as it's hard to compare like other sports, like you got Brady and Gronk, like in the NFL. And there's just a lot of good duos across sports. I think in hockey, though, like the best duo, I'd say, down the middle since we saw Crosby and Malkin tearing it up, right? Like th- that has to be the last time we saw someone uh, in the NHL, at least at center, dominate at that level. Mm-hmm. Even those o- Oilers teams, when you go to the 80s, it was before my time. I can't really comment much on it. But in my lifetime, I'd go Crosby, Malkin, uh, one right now because they got the chips, right? They got three cups together. But if McDavid and Dreisaitl go all the way, they enter the chat for sure. Yeah, you talk about Taves and Kane and Yager and Lemieux. Mm-hmm. There's lots. There's lots. But yeah. I want to focus on Leon Dreisaitl. I just think that in the playoffs, this guy goes to another gear. So good. We know how great McDavid. McDavid, you know, he's only what does he have? Two goals, six assists, minus two on the series. And that's but quiet. That's quiet, yeah. right? For McDavid, he's over averaging over a point per game, and that's quiet for him. But Stevie, man, Leon Dreisaitl. The way he controls the game in the playoffs and the way he's got a bit of a mean streak to him, it just he's the second best player in the world, and there's no question about it, right? I agree. It, and it's scary when they put those two together on the same line as they've done at times. Because you see what they're doing, LA. They're just dedicating so many bodies to McDavid. He's got no time, no space. But when you put two, three guys on McDavid, you can't put two, three guys on dry settle as well. So it's been a problem when those two have connected. And that's when I think you've seen Edmonton really have their most success, whether it be at five and five or on the power play. So dry settle is a big reason for that because you have to give him the same attention you pay McDavid. And you just can't. You can't devote the same players. And we saw that early on in this series when McDavid was quiet, but dry settle was doing whatever he wanted. And now with the two of them on the same line, you're seeing McDavid start to break through a little bit more because you also need to be aware of dry cycle. So they're definitely one, two right now on the top of the list of best players in the game. And you know what? Like 
I, I think entering the year, you definitely have Matthews at three, and I'd, I'd keep Austin Matthews at number three. But I think there might be a bit of a, you know, a tear break after McDavid and Dreisaitl yeah. at the top. What do you make of Evander Kane's play this series? I think he's scored so many timely goals. He's been such a huge factor. Uh, what do you make of his play uh, on that Oilers roster? He's another guy who's tough and just ready for the postseason. Like he's battled through a lot of this series. I feel like every game they cut to the bench and he's holding his knee, he's holding his arm, he's holding something. Like he's <laughs> he's taken a beating in this series, but he keeps playing and keeps trudging forward. And that clutch goal he scored to send the game to overtime, the, the game that the Oilers won to tie the series, it was impressive. Like he is a good player. There's been off the ice concerns with Kane his whole career. But on the ice, there's never really been a question about the talent. He's always had that skill. Um, so one more game tonight. You got the Stars against the Wild. Game six. How do you think this one ends tonight? Yeah, I I I, I picked the Minnesota Wild to win this series, but Jake Ottinger is oh. just shutting the taps off. There's nothing getting through anymore. He is becoming like a legit perennial postseason performer. We, everyone remembers what. He did to the Calgary Flames last year, had a 950-plus save percentage, nearly knocked Calgary out of the first round single-handedly, and he's doing it again now. You've seen it these last couple of games. He's found his stride, and when he plays that way, like it's just good luck. And I think Ottinger is going to be an X-factor in the Western Conference because we have a lot of goalie concerns. Edmonton, there was talk that Jack Campbell should have got the start after he relieved Stuart Skinner in Game 4. And now there's talk, you know, Laurent Brossois and the Vegas Golden Knights move on, but how much do we really trust Brossois between the pipes? And you look at what's happening between the goal, the uh, Kraken and the Avalanche. It's not like we have a lot of faith in either of those goalies. Ottinger, if Dallas can advance through this round, could be the X factor moving forward in that Western Conference. Yeah, I'm with you. I think Vegas got a bit of a free pass against the Jets. Yeah. And shout out to uh, Rope Hints, by the way. 11 points, so yeah, four goals, seven good. assists. Okay, before we let you go, we need Stevie, uh, Stevie P's best bets of the night. All right, I've got three up on the site. I've been really loving the prop picks during the playoffs. I like Taylor Hall to score a point tonight at minus 103. Ooh. He's been on a tear. Martin Natchez to not score a point, plus 120. He's been held off the board in 11 of his last 15 games. My final pick, Jaden Schwartz to score a point, minus 115. He's got it on the board in four or five games of that series. Stevie, you're the man. I hope your recovery on that knee goes well, and hopefully we talk soon. Maybe next week we'll get you back on the show. Sounds great, guys. I'd love it. All right, Stevie, take care, buddy.